This is the Engineer. He has 125 health, isn't very mobile, and on his own is one of the worst classes in Team Fortress 2. But there's one thing, one special facet that, if used correctly, makes him one of the greatest, most oppressive classes in any game ever. And it lets him do things like this. Okay, but let's hold on a second because these clips aren't me. In fact, here's a clip of me doing what I can best explain as trying my best. Yeah. Engineer is one of my worst classes. He's one of my least played, and honestly, it's for good reason. Because every time I decide to play as him, I nearly have a panic attack with all the noises and sounds and everything going wrong until... Yeah, sure, I could just play like a toddler and sit in a room for 30 minutes waiting for people to come to me, but that's no fun. For years, I've been sitting on the sidelines seeing amazing engineers do crazy things, and I mean, man, I want to do that. There are so many playstyles, so many unique items, so much stuff going on, like, come on, man, th this looks sick! When I play NG, yeah, you know that guy in Kirby Air Ride who just hits the red boxes for the legendary parts and, and knows nothing else in the game other than hitting red boxes? Yeah, that's me. Only knowing hitting my sentry and walking forward to my death. Sometimes I get lucky in top score, but most of the time, I just get the bomb power up. So, in my quest to become the best TF2 player of all time, I decided the next class I should play for one month straight is the one I've wanted to main since I was a little boy. Because engineer and wanting to main him is what got me into TF2 in the first place. Look, I, I know what you're thinking. Uncle Shane over here can just waltz in and become an engineer main overnight. But trust me when I say that that was everything but the case. In fact, the process of making this video was, without question, one of the most frustrating experiences I've ever had playing a video game. My buildings got destroyed a countless amount of times, I died in the most extreme ways, and it got to the point where I actually raged at the 15-year-old video game in what feels like forever. Gonna fucking crit me or something. I can't believe it! I can't fucking believe it! We'll get to that when we get there. Right now, I've removed every other class in my arsenal, I dusted off some old textbooks, and I got to work spending one month playing only Engineer. Here we go. To keep things fresh, I set two main goals to keep me focused and track my improvement throughout the entire month. I think if I didn't set any goals and just played Engineer anytime I wanted, the video would be less of a challenge and more of a fun little experiment. The first goal is to get 8500 kills in total with any item in the Engineer's arsenal. Again, this is less about me being a tryhard and killing friendlies, but more about me playing the game enough. Theoretically, if I play long enough and well enough, I should be able to hit this easily. But my biggest gripe of the Soldier video was that I somehow inadvertently locked myself into using the stock rocket launcher due to the strange kill goal I set in place for myself. I truly believed at the time that getting 8,500 kills would be a cakewalk, so I was caught off guard when I barely <laughs> scraped by on day 30. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted this time to be different, but I also wanted to have one item that would be able to track everything because one, uh, uh, math is stupid, and two, as enticing as it seems to get strange variants of literally every engineer item, taking one look at the price of a strange gunslinger made me change my mind very fast. But thanks to a beautiful commenter, I learned that there's actually a strange part for cosmetics that track kills for you. It is a little pricey for a strange part, but you know, thank you dude, money's rolling in. So I bought the funniest cosmetic I could find, put the strange part on it, equipped it on every single weapon slot, and was now able to keep track of my progress throughout. Yippee. But that pales in comparison to goal two, which is a lot more nuanced than goal one. Engineer skill isn't heavily reliant on mechanics like aim, it's actually a lot more reliant on the mental side of things, aka game sense. Finding out where to stand, figuring out what to do, where to place your buildings, how to maintain your buildings, all this stuff and much more must be thought about every single second you're playing Engineer. The problem is that saying it is a lot easier than actually doing it. And when it comes to game sense, I'm what people like to call stupid. I normally just run it down without a care in the world, hoping I could just out DM the five people that saw me. So for goal two, I want to become better mentally as the engineer. I want to learn office as engineer. I want to learn how to use the damn rescue ranger. I want to learn battle NG. I want to learn all of it all in a month. And the best way if I could figure out if I actually improved as engineer is to play on Dust Bowl for both day one and day 30. Dust Bowl is already engineer hell with all the demo men and soldiers and spies and snipers walking around. So I feel like a map like this where engineers counters are heightened make for the best place to see if I'm actually improving or not. I don't know. Does that make sense? Look, my team doesn't even have to win the round. If I could be a more effective teammate or even a better engineer in total, However that is, I feel like I've done my job there. I also want to make sure that I give each playstyle an appropriate amount of time to give a solid chance, so I've locked away some items until a certain time threshold so I can see firsthand 
which playstyle works for me. I know that if I didn't do this, I'd just stick to my one playstyle the entire time, similar to what I did with the soldier, and I wouldn't give the variety of items the engineer has the right time of day. So in a perfect world with this strategy, I'd give each playstyle a certain amount of time. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So with all that said, at 1 in the morning on January 1st, I went up to my room and celebrated New Year's the only way I knew how. Hello? It's January 1st. I just got back from New Year's. How y'all doing today? I got my loadout here. As you can see, very original names I know. And look at look at Uncle Shane over here. Oh, look at him. He's so, he's so freaking cute, Uncle Shane. Yeah, I'm ready to play. I'm ready to game. I have around 80 hours as engineer right now, so I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to, to see how much I play time I have afterward. I think to start off, let's just join a Dust Bowl game, so let's just like... Alright, so I know, like, you gotta put the teleporter down. The other tele goes, like, here. Shit! Okay, I'll build a sentry gun. I think a good spot is like here. Oh, uh, I don't know where to put this, dude. Um, I guess we'll, I guess we'll put it here. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm actually I'm actually him already. God damn. Gotta help. Gotta save the day. No, my friend. Oh, look at that. That's like the play. Oh, sh shit. What the fuck? Why are you walking in? Yeah, I think we've uh, we've seen enough. As you can see, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know where to place my stuff. None of it gets upgraded in time. And under pressure, I just crack. So with that as our baseline, I think it's time we join the first game. Oh, it's it's capture the flag. Uh, I think you already know what I'm gonna do now. Dude, I'm like a real engineer player. Oh my god. This is so... Capture, capture the, flag the flag is the worst is the game worst I've been TF2. While I wait for someone to come in, let me talk to you about the loadout that I'm using right now. I wanted to use the first 10 days as a way to see how much I can improve at my own engineer playstyle and see how overall effective it is. My normal playstyle involves the stock shotgun, swapped sometimes with the Widowmaker, the stock pistol, and the Jag. The reason why is because it's like, it's like playing Scout, except you're slower and you're able to build an automatic uh, aiming machine for you. No one, no one's still here, dude. What the fuck? Okay, I'm bored. This set allows me to play really aggressively, like I have many sentries, and if I don't die immediately, I can make it level two or three, and then become insanely overpowered. In, in theory, anyway. Uh, the first harsh reality that I had to face is that engineer is not scout he can't run he can't double jump he, he can't do anything fun really which sucks because i see so much terrain that i want to jump around on and i am so slow and so lame and i am just here to hit my building and even though i wasn't really playing for too long i, I could sense the stress coming to me fucking bitch <sighs> no come on what i uh wasn't thinking Oh my god! Okay, I obviously have a lot to work on, but let me talk about something pretty cool here. If you can see from this footage, it seems like I'm creating buildings nearly instantly. Normally, when you want to make a building, you have to press 4 on the keyboard to bring up the building menu, then whatever corresponding key the building has to finally be able to construct it. But as much as I'd like to credit my incredible typing speed with this, there's actually a way to bypass this menu using binds. For example, instead of pulling out my PDA and pressing 1 on my keyboard to build a sentry, I can instead type in the console build 2-0 and I have my sentry gun ready. But if I don't want to go in the console every time to be able to do that, I could just bind it to a key so that command is executed every time I press that button. For example, bind hyphen build to zero. So now every time I press the hyphen key, I can build a sentry anytime I want. Using these commands makes doing things like rollouts really easy and mixing it with a loadout bind can have me switch loadouts extremely quickly. By day three, I was already getting a lot more comfortable with the fundamentals. I began to learn the famous jag effect rollout where during setup time, you go to the first point and place your buildings with the eureka effect, then teleport back to switch to the jag to take advantage of the quicker swing speed. And while I normally played for my team, I, of course, have to do a little bit of trolling as well. You're hey, guys, high five me. I bet nothing will happen. Okay, get him. <laughs> it's too Let's easy go. where I'm from. It's too easy. I killed the scout. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't actually kill him. Oh, my God. He dead ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, behind you, buddy. Run, 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 run. Overall, things were going pretty good. I did have a few... Uh, gamer moments and I was getting a little bit stressed out, but it was nothing serious to the point that it would actually worry me. And hey, I even ran into someone who recognized me for my videos, and what he said made my entire day. Hi. 
It sounds weird, but me and my girlfriend like watch your fucking video. Wait, that like, ass? Uh, this little shit. Yes, that ass, dude. That shit was fucking amazing. Let's go! Oh my god, that's awesome. Mr. Beast! And after this, he offered to crit creep me, which I'm a reformed soul. I would never abuse my clout to get a crit. Of course I did. What are you talking about? Do you know who I am? It's just too easy. Honestly, meeting people who actually recognize me for my videos is, is kind of crazy. I'm still getting used to the whole people watching me thing. So if you ever do see me in a game, just just say hi. That, that's, that's really cool. You don't actually have to pocket me. But uh, thank you to Mayor of Benjamin City for really making my day there. I also want to give another shout out to the map Swiftwater. You're going to be seeing it a lot in this video. And the main reason is because nobody likes to check their flanks. There is a very easy strategy where you can just walk through the enemy team, build a teleporter behind them, and then you have a base behind them. Don't worry, guys. I have a telly behind them. Now we win. Jerkin, 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 jerkin. My cock, my cock. That's what, that's all your recordings are gonna be. <laughs> I suck at this fucking video game. No! This game sucks! I hate TF2. Okay, I know the game already ended in this clip, but for whatever reason, Heavy has been kind of a surprising pain in the ass. Yeah, I know, Demoman and Soldier are easy picks for big problems since they can literally destroy everything I own. But for whatever reason, Heavy's been the one that stood out to me. I think the main problem has been my sentry placement, and since the sentry gun has a limited range of sight, there's a lot of times where the Heavy can either stand far away and just snipe my sentry gun, or he's able to get close enough to it to destroy it in an instant. He's also just hard to kill as NG. I already know this is my scout brain talking, because I love fighting Heavy's as scout. But as NG, I just can't seem to do enough damage to get anything done. Maybe I should just, you know, stop trying to force it, but Heavy's been a surprising challenge throughout these first couple of days. And speaking of problems, there was another one that set in a lot quicker than I thought it would. Dude, I won't lie. I'm not even, like, doing that bad. I'm just... I'm just bored. Oh my god. Although I did feel like I was improving significantly, I won't lie. Playing like this all the time is really boring. TF2 is a movement game, and Engineer is one of the least mobile classes. Especially with the set I'm using, there's just not much that's possible that isn't just walking around and shooting some dudes. So in desperation, I ended up becoming a true Texan. Because as Confucius says in The Art of War, the best bits come in the face of pure boredom. There's stop a peek my spot, my spinner. Stop a peek my spot. I gotta move these three things out while going going. I'm gonna use my bunger to hit her funger, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I do that cause I know, I know that me. Be sure to like the Yo Mama videos on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram! I'm not even gonna the RB sandwich. Not be better than the RB sandwich. We're not gonna be the RB sandwich. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Yeah, I won't lie to you. There's not really much to document in the next three days. My friends and I played some Intox Mario Kart, which is the best map ever, and I play some sessions sometimes on my discord <laughs> but playing on it as engineer who refuses to build a sentry because <clears throat> sentries on, on, on mario kart there wasn't really much else to do oh wait a my god wait a minute it's past oh there's freaking bots everywhere i'm getting kicked bye <laughs> oh my god until on day 10 right before i switched my loadout for the first time i decided to check my strange and oh that's that can't that can't be right. No, that actually can't be right. I have almost that many kills on on my shotguns. I I, I gotta I gotta check something. Hold up. So I did some testing with a different strange cosmetic, and it turns out that this strange cosmetic part that says kills on it, uh, doesn't track sentry kills. Yeah, sentry kills are its own metric apparently. What the fuck? What, why? Why would they do that? Their kills they show up on the kill feed. They they work the same for kill streaks. So why in the name of big fucking blungus it would it would not be counted as a normal kill? This is this is crazy, dude. What am I going to do? I don't even know what to do now. Seeing this happen really demoralized me. I set a goal for myself, but I don't think that goal is physically possible in one month. I already figured out that getting 8500 kills as NG would be enough of a challenge, but now that it only counts shotgun and wrench kills, I, I, I'm lost. I'm actually, I'm actually lost. The only real way that I'd even have time to achieve something like that is if YouTube was my only job. Which, if you'd like to help make that happen. Whoa, is that the, 
is that my whole editing process of the of the intro that I showed before? Whoa, is that is that the, is that the whole thing? That's so crazy, man. That's, That's super cool. cool. Knowing that the goal I set myself was literally impossible, I had to concede that challenge, and instead I decided to go for fifteen thousand points on my uncle Shane. Look, I know I'm a loser, and I changed the goal, but seriously, if you think I'm gonna learn anything about playing engineer by running around with my shotgun farming kills, then I don't know, man. You're just deluding yourself. Also, these first ten days taught me something really crazy, which is uh, engineer's not really a kill machine. Maybe it's because every time I see a good engineer, I, I die to them, but I always thought he'd be more of a tanky powerhouse, when in reality, most of playing engineer is preparing for the action, not jumping into it. From what I've learned, a sentry gun should be the last line of defense, not the first. And when I do decide to move that gear up and go deep, my sentry gets destroyed in less time it would take to, <laughs> to buy land in the metaverse. <laughs> you know what NG is? He's a point farming machine. So maybe changing the metric from kills to points is the right choice. I, I guess we'll find out. And to truly motivate me on my last game, I was given one of the most motivational speeches I will ever hear. Team, last round maybe didn't go that good for us, but there's always a time for new beginnings. Let me just say that opening Uber push for my good friend Yellow Shade made that Uber dropping trick stab. <clears throat> I'm just gonna say it. That brought a tingling to my toes that only Funko Pop collecting has brought to me before. But now I'm realizing that there are new paths in my life that I can take. I think I'm ready to take that adult diaper off and start using the potty like a big boy. And maybe the last few times I tried ended in, ended in diarrhea disaster, but this time I think it's gonna end in ploppy perfection. Let's go team. And with that beautiful speech by <laughs> AP Surprise, I was ready to go in to section two. And I'll be honest, if I knew what the road ahead of me entailed, I would have turned back right then. <sighs> All right, hello, it's day 11. I am up and I'm ready to play some engineer. Doing pretty good right now, status update. My uncle Shane's at like 3,000-ish points. I, 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 I think I already talked about in the script that uh, I had to change the rule. And yeah, opening thoughts about these couple days, uh, I've been getting really fucking bored playing this one set. So I'm hoping that this new set is gonna is gonna add a lot more complexity and uh, make it more fun, hopefully, and I'm gonna have fun! I'm excited to have fun, Let, let's have some fun. Now that I'm really in the thick of it, I decided that now would be the time to learn how to play what I consider to be the uh, meta engineer. I didn't really know how to play like him at all, but this that's what this is all about. Anyway, here's the set I'll be using for the next 10 days. <laughs> Going in, I felt like this change would be just what I needed. If there's one thing that I've really hated about playing Engineer so far, it's the feeling of my nest, which I've loved and care for, instantly dying to one demo man, with me being incapable of doing much else except run away or go down with my ship. Now, with the Rescue Ranger, I can heal my sentry gun from any range I'd like, and give it the chance it truly deserves, without the risk of me getting killed if shit does hit the fan. That, included with the Wrangler, really makes me super excited to actually learn this set. I've always heard people talking about the Wrangler like it's some broken item because when you pull it out, there's a shield that appears. But I don't know if it's just me, but there's a noticeable delay after you pull out the Wrangler to the shield actually showing up. And from when I've played TF2, it makes a difference a, a lot of the time. Also, since we're talking about the Wrangler, um, I have to show you the clip of Crobalt saying it funny for my shitty YouTube video. So like the Wrangler? <laughs> I really wanted to spend this time focusing on when to go in, because either I'm the worst player in the universe, or I'm just the most unlucky human being of all time. See ya. <laughs> Throughout the first 10 days, I lost track of the amount of times that I would look outside the battlefield and no one would be there, then I'd pick up my buildings, try to move it forward, and... Oh look, it's just the enemy team waiting for me. This happened so many times, and I'd just say it's me sucking, but I have an invite medal, so it's gotta be bad luck. For example, remember when I talked about hating Pyro in my soldier video and everyone complained about it? Well, either I have no game sense at all, or this is just stupid. Oh, how's he, how's he there? <laughs> okay. What the fuck? Wait, why is he there? What? I swear to fucking Christ! Dude, I do not fucking understand. It's the same pyro. <laughs> Get fucked. So, yeah, the best way to fix this is just time 
and with time, I was getting a lot better. I also decided to just join a jump map and try it as NG. I know I'm not the best sentry jumper in the world, and I'm not planning on being one, but it is a skill that can be pretty useful sometimes. For example, on Bad Water Last, you can explosive jump up to this little roof over here, and with the Rescue Ranger, you can pick up your gun and actually place it there. It is actually a very strong spot that pretty much needs an uber to be pushed, and on offense, if you can pull it off, it can lead to some insane combinations. Of course, though, that pales in comparison to the epic funny moments. Oh, that's it's just unlucky. too easy. It's that's too really easy unlucky. where that's I'm from. Just in case. Hello. <laughs> no fucking way. Why? Why? Say one. Med down. <laughs> Cyber down. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Cyber down. Unlike the last set, this new set allowed for a lot more options. For the first 10 days, playing engineer felt very one dimensional. But this, it feels a lot better. Not only is my mobility moot now by healing my sentry, but I can just take it anywhere. And like the Wrangler, I can try jumping in for a cool kill, which I didn't really do much, but it was pretty cool. Or I can finally fortify my nest even better than before, which is great, because the worst part about playing NG so far has been my nest dying. But with these upsides come a major downside. That being, are you fucking kidding me? Okay, look, I know that this is breaking no new ground here. Saying that Engineer is weak against Spy is like saying that Big Chungus is funny. Everyone already knows that Big Baby Bungo is 10 times funnier. Beast. Ah, that's too funny. So to make this segment more interesting and not just me repeating things that you've heard a million times, I asked ChatGBT to explain why Engineer is weak at fighting the Spy in monkey banana terms. And, uh... <laughs> And this is what I got. In Team Fortress 2, the engineer is like a monkey who builds and takes care of banana trees. The engineer's banana trees are important to their team as they provide bananas for everyone to eat and help the team win. However, when facing off against a spy, they're at a disadvantage. The spy is like a sneaky banana thief who can easily sneak around the map and steal bananas from the engineer's trees. The spy has special tools like a banana peeling knife that can easily destroy the engineer's banana trees. Once the spy has placed their knife on an engineer's banana tree, the engineer must remove it quickly before the banana tree is destroyed. Another problem for the engineer is that they're not very good at moving around quickly, like a monkey. They can move around quickly between their banana trees, but are generally slow and vulnerable when away from them. The spy can take advantage of this by stealing bananas from the engineer when they're away from their banana trees, or by sneaking up on them from behind. So, in monkey banana terms, the engineer is weak at fighting the spy because spy is a sneaky banana thief who can easily steal bananas from the en got blood on engineer's my banana trees. And the engineer Damn is it. not very good at moving around quickly to stop them. Damn it! Did, did you get that? Okay, spy has sapper, sapper bad, spy is really annoying. You gotta be kidding. You gotta be kidding. Especially because it seems like so far, whenever I'm having a decent game, like, like five kill streak decent, it feels like three people on the enemy team switch to spy out of nowhere and gang stalk me until I inevitably get spawn camped. Ugh. Also, the kunai is so annoying dude there are so many spies that are so predictable like literally walking around in the same circle predictable but i couldn't kill them because i keep killing my teammates and my 20 damage rescue ranger wasn't doing anything to stop this guy from getting infinite health from walking the same fucking circle i think you can tell i wasn't having fun anymore look this loadout is really good sometimes honestly it's great it's so rewarding to have a nest that actually it works but god damn when it doesn't work i've never felt more helpless than I have when it just doesn't work. The rescue ranger sucks at fighting people. If you get in a position where your gun's down and you're on your own, you, you, you're better off kill binding than actually trying to fight because you're just delaying the inevitable. Can someone fucking do something? I can't believe it. And especially when I'm getting absolutely screwed by spies and every game I'm playing, it, this combo just doesn't work. Look, this playstyle may work for others in these situations, but for me, I, I can't do it, man. My top classes are all damage classes. I am a DPS main. I want to be the carry. I want to be the guy with the million crit stickies. I want to be the most subscribed Zenith. 
<laughs> sure, this team-centric playstyle works when the team is good, but when my team isn't good, I'm fucked. We are just getting absolutely stomped because I'm not able to do anything. I can't help at all. I, I need I need to change something up because this is fucking insane. I think a major problem was the fact that most pubs are in balance as shit anyway, and I'm used to being a power class that could normally make an attempt to get my team to win. But when it's like this, when I can't even get out of spawn, I'm absolutely screwed, and I have no other option than to just re -queue. And I can't, I can't help. I can't help. I can't go sniper. I can't go demo. I can't go medic to even fucking attempt to push out with anyone. I don't, I don't trust anyone here fucking pushing with me. I'm fucked. I'm fucked pretty much. Sure, playing soldier for one month wasn't fun, but if times got tough, I could at least ask someone to pocket me and, and try my best. But with engineer, I am just screwed. And getting into multiple games in a row where I am absolutely useless by design, especially when I have a goal set in place for myself to get points and I can't because I'm screwed, it becomes one of the most frustrating cycles ever. I queue into a game, I get spawn camped, I leave. I queue into a game, I'm finally not spawn camped, but my team is rolling so hard that I don't see anybody. I queued into game after game and every single one was just a complete steamroll. And when my team wasn't getting absolutely decimated, we were decimating them, so it doesn't even matter. <sighs> Alright, I want to use this part to talk about one of the shortcomings of a challenge like this. That being that sometimes Engineer just isn't the right play. Forcing myself to play Engineer has given me a lot of games where I felt pigeonholed into being literally useless for my team. Either because we're rolling so hard that setting up buildings is practically a waste of 30 seconds, or we're so terrible that it's impossible to get out of spawn without getting eviscerated two seconds later. And as a class who needs to create buildings to be even somewhat useful, especially with this loadout, I had so many games where I was so helplessly stomped with zero counterplay at all. There are so many games where I look outside and I go, man, I really should play Medic right now. But I put this self-imposed restriction on my Myself where I can. I just don't know if the problems that I'm getting into are a result of me not being able to switch class or if I'm just doing something wrong and I don't realize it. I was genuinely getting angry at this video game. I, I couldn't get one game where I was even useful, let alone good. It got to a point where I really couldn't take it anymore. Not only was I not making any progress, but I had no idea what I was even doing wrong. So finally, I caved and I contacted one of the best engineer mains of all time. And graciously, he offered to review some of my footage. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Dane. Uh, hello, my name is Uncle Dane, and I'm going to be reviewing these demo demos that uh, were sent to me. First of all, this rollout. Um, not good. Um, uh, right there. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Nice predict on the spy, and nice sub random crit. We all know that that's totally skill based. Uh, teleporter is facing away from the point. But that's okay. But yeah, there you go. Going back to spawn. See, this is what a lot of engineers don't like to do: is go back to spawn to replace the entrance. They don't understand how important it is to keep that teleporter up. At this point, when you're near spawn and you know you're probably gonna have to one v one a scout on your way back because he's behind, you should have switched to the shotgun so you can properly DM that guy, but it looks like you don't need it. And honestly, you've been DMing people so effectively with the Rescue Ranger, I, I honestly don't really know why you're even on it. So maybe the Rescue Ranger isn't even the best option for you at this point. When you went back to spawn at that, at that moment to replace the teleporter, maybe you should have uh, replaced your gun. You should be building a sentry gun right now. Yeah, you're not even building a sentry gun anymore. You're just trying to kill somebody with... <laughs> you did it. You did it, man. You you finally did it. You're almost out of ammo on the rescue ranger because of that. People are dying. Okay, you have two kills on your center gun. You're in spawn. You should switch to Frontier Justice. Okay, but you stay on rescue ranger. You gotta you gotta be super aware of like when you can switch and if you should switch to a different gun. Oh, uh, yeah, swinging wildly. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you just kind of probably freaked out there. That looked like a freak out moment. Yeah, you're getting attacked by spies in all of these clips where you have the rescue ranger. You should be on shotgun. <laughs> what? I don't like what? What is this teleporter theory? Like, why are you going so out of your way to put your teleporter like in a weird spot? Just put it in that corner with your dispenser. And now you're getting into to a DM fight with an engineer who has a pistol while you have a little uh, BB gun that doesn't do anything. Good, bad idea, bad idea. He's gonna pistol you down, man. <laughs> it's so frustrating seeing you DMing people with the 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 rescue ranger and not putting the gun up. <laughs> why, are you, why are you participating in these fights? You have to get your buildings up. If you're on rescue ranger, like you're not you're not a uh, you're not a gamer. You can't game. Oh, you got sniped. Body shot. Pretty cool. And then he's doing a cool backflip. So that makes up for it. All I know is that like on second and first point. 
<laughs> I, love that. I love that you're chasing people down with the rescue ranger. Like, you could have two-shotted that spy 100% if you had the shotgun. And you get crit. That's awesome. I love random crits. I would come up Jag, honestly. No reason not to. Now you're just, like, pissed off. You're just like, fuck you, spy. How dare you pistol my gun instead of building another one? Like, you gotta let go of the anger. You gotta let go of the hate. Yep. Kill the spy. Gotta kill the spy, 100%. Called spy in chat, I saw that. And you die for it. You're so... Yeah, you're... Yeah. You're so tunnel-visioned with the spy, and yet... You're using the absolute worst weapon to deal with them. All right, you're on shotgun. Cool. Let's see what you do with shotgun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you missed your first. Yeah, I got taunt him back. You gotta fucking recover from that first missed on standing still demo man kills. Oh, okay, <laughs> you're switching back to the rescue ranger. Not good. And you're just trying to kill people with it. Stop trying to kill people with the rescue ranger. Just switch to the. So I, I think you're noticing uh, a theme here. Yeah, looking back at my engineer gameplay, I, uh, I I really liked shooting people with the rescue ranger. I genuinely didn't even realize I was doing this, but I guess my damage dealing pass has taken over my brain with how I should play TF2. Look, I normally play a damage class. Scout, sniper, soldier, demo are all the main classes I play. I like damage, and, and I don't like relying on other people doing it for me. So maybe my independent playstyle that I've accrued for myself in the seven years I've been playing TF2 have taken a toll on me. Dane also had a really good point here. You gotta, you gotta be super aware of like when you can switch and if you should switch to a different gun. Because right now you would have, what is that, six, seven, eight revenge crits. And I honestly have to agree there. I went into this thinking that I could go hardcore with one item set for 10 days straight, but that's just not how this works. As an engineer, you need to be flexible. You can't just stick with one loadout all the time and I foolishly thought that I could. So going on from day 17, I activated all two neurons in my brain to figure out when it was the right time to use the Rescue Ranger and when I should switch to my shotgun loadout. I switched on and off from these items, normally defaulting to the Rescue Ranger combo, but if I saw myself doing something like shooting people, I swapped his shotgun and play aggressive. Also, I do feel a bit vindicated because he also said this, but I mean, honestly, your entire team's getting run over, so I don't really know exactly what you're supposed to do there. Sometimes when your t entire team is getting pushed uh, like that, not really much else you can do. So maybe I wasn't all that bad. Maybe I, maybe I was pretty good. Dane also talked a lot about how I wasn't placing buildings or upgrading them at all. Uh, these gameplay reviews go for over 30 minutes, and I think they're really useful. So if you want to hear it all, there's a link in the description that you can click, or you can just click on the screen somewhere. It'll tell you. It'll, it'll like yell at you to, to click it. If you want to learn from my mistakes, it is a really good watch, so I do recommend you do it. It's also going to be on a brand new channel that I'm going to use for live stream stuff. So uh, subscribe to that, because it's going to be so epic there. It's going to be so epic. Also, follow my Twitch. I felt rejuvenated, like I was baptized with the engineer blessing. This simple change of not locking my loadout made such a major change, it's not even funny. There were times in like the, the really bad times where I would switch to the shotgun, mainly because I, I couldn't take it anymore, but I'd always feel bad afterwards. But since I'm already locking myself to a class, it's stupid for me to also lock my loadout. I also don't know if this is a coincidence, but I, I lost my streak of bad games. I started playing a lot better, and I felt like I was improving very quickly. And honestly, things were going incredibly. You know, now that I'm not forcing myself to use the Rescue Ranger, I'm starting to enjoy it like a lot more. I felt so trapped into using the Rescue Ranger because of this stupid self-imposed challenge. Maybe this idea is stupid. <laughs> and if the story ended right there, a happy ending, then things would be great. I finally found my place as an engineer and I was on the up and up, but I still had another 10 days to go. And unfortunately, Sometimes life doesn't hand out happy endings. Uh, yo, what's up? It's day uh, 21. I just finished some boba tea, um, vanilla flavor. Thank you for asking. Uh, I love sugar. So I didn't really talk about the loadout in my live comments, so I had to animate it afterwards and all that stuff. Uh, but I'm just gonna talk about it now because I'm lazy so these last 10 days I'm gonna go back to the pistol. Maybe maybe I'll switch it up a little bit I'll go switch to jag to the gunslinger and then switch this this little buddy right here with uh, This guy I didn't buy a strange one <laughs> I've been putting this set off because it's probably the one I'm gonna enjoy the most and I want to really suffer as NG before I got to the good stuff, you know? Also, I haven't really checked on Uncle Shane right here since uh, since day 11. So uh, let's let's do that right now. We'll, I'll just check it live and we'll, we'll react together, okay? In three, two, one. 
one. Oh. Oh, wow, that's... <laughs> That's really behind. Oh no. Yeah, so in order to get 15,000 points, I would have need to have 10,000 points by this time. And I'm only at 8,000. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that me being behind is a result of me not playing enough because I think I've played enough. But I had a long string of a couple days where every game was terrible. Honestly, the prospect of me having to play Engineer for even more time uh, it terrified me. But I knew it was what I had to do. So I sat down and I got on that grind. This this is a great spawn. <laughs> I love Thunder Mountain. I love Chunger Mountain. Yeah, yeah, because I can I can hit all three of my oh, but you suck. But you're just bad. Cause you missed one. Yeah, he doesn't have to aim. Awesome. Oh, he has a teleporter entrance. Dude, that's smart. Where the fuck did that guy come from? <laughs> At this point, every item was unlocked, so I was able to use any engineer set that I wanted. And I don't know if this was my good karma finally getting to me, but I, I was getting in some pretty crazy flank spots. He ran out the Shh. door, bro. He Shh. can't get back in. Shh, I'm sneaky. I'm getting out of here. No! Wait, they don't see my telly. It's still up. My telly's still up! Let's go. No way! They don't see it! How do they not see it? Okay, this is how we win. This is fucking ridiculous. I cannot believe it's gonna work. <laughs> hey guys, they don't know, but I have a teleporter behind. But I'm gonna go first. <laughs> Fuck, they knew. <laughs> 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 Okay, so we gotta talk about the Frontier Justice real quick, because, oh, oh my god. Before recording this video, I actually never used the Frontier Justice, mainly because I always thought it would open the door to me getting a bunch of unfair kills, and I felt like if I got used to having a very high damage crit weapon, I'd become exponentially worse without it. So when I joined my first game, and this happened... I won't lie. I feel horrible about this. If you actually look at the stats, you can see a, a lot of red text there, you know, 50% clip size, no random crits, uh, but you, you get crits. The 50% clip size doesn't matter when you could kill everything in two shots anyway. Heavies are destroyed, snipers destroyed, annoying ass scouts that are in your spawn. Fuck you, bitch. Well, I didn't have it equipped for this clip, but, but if I did, he'd be screwed. I felt unfairly powerful with this item. And that's saying a lot, because in the last challenge, I used the battalion's backup and didn't care at all. On paper, getting two crits per sentry kill sounds fair enough, because you're pretty weak without the crits, and in theory, when your sentry dies, normally that means you're in like a bad position that you're probably gonna die in. But paired with the gunslinger, which not only gives you weaker sentries for a lower cost, but also gives you an extra 25 health, you become a god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was having fun. There's a strat that I learned very early on where you build a sentry gun, let it get a few kills here and there. Then when there seems like enough downtime, you destroy the sentry, build up a new one, then you're right back where you started, but now you do three times the damage with your shotgun. What? Damn it! Damn it over here! I can't understate this. You can do so much damage at once that you can cheese fights that you're not gonna win without it. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. This is so fun. I I love this item. Look, look, I'm gonna. Where do you think you're going? Ooh. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god. Now the things have seemed to have gotten a lot better, I want to talk about the reasons why I think this challenge is a good thing. Look, I won't lie, there's a lot of pitfalls when you have to force yourself to play one class, but there's also a lot of benefit. And to be transparent, I think a lot of people can get value out of maining a class instead of exclusively playing only one. I mean, it would be a lot more enjoyable that way, wouldn't it? And in the right hands, being able to force yourself to main a class this way can be a very beneficial way to actually get what you want out the class. But for someone like me, someone who has such a low attention span that I need to literally have South Park
aren't playing while I edit. For someone like me, the best way to learn is to repeatedly slam my head against the wall until I either bleed out or actually slowly improve. When it comes to this other style of manning a class, it relies a lot on your own intuition and decision to actually play the class instead of forcing yourself to just sit through it, which in some ways is a good thing. I just know that I wouldn't be able to commit to something like that. I look at a game where the team desperately needs an engineer and go, eh, well, you know, I, I don't really need to play him. With maturity and discipline, being able to decide this stuff for yourself is a very good way to objectively learn a class. But I don't have that. I also want to say that a lot of people seemed really worried about my sanity throughout the last challenge, and it ended with people thinking that I'd get more burnt out of TF2 doing this. But honestly, the result was the exact opposite of the case. The month after playing Soldier was one of the most fun months I've ever had playing TF2. I truly fell in love with this game again after playing Soldier for a month. And, and look, right now, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it again. I'm having a great time now. When it comes to everything in life, to be able to truly enjoy the positives, you really need to stick through the negatives. Speaking of negatives... <laughs> Yeah, remember when I made that one video and I said that Engineer is a defense class and you shouldn't be going uh, full Rambo mode to kill snipers? Fuck, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to get where you're coming from, man. Sniper was my third main problem throughout this challenge. Since NG has, like, no range, Sniper is just able to destroy him sometimes. Dude, I like playing Sniper and a majority of the time he's just a free kill. But when he isn't... Oh my god, he's one of the most annoying classes in the entire game. Especially with this hyper-aggressive set, it's become a dice roll if a sniper I was fighting was actually good enough to hit his shots. Don't get me wrong, some games they were free kills, but some games they would just absolutely wreck me. But other than the occasional god-tier sniper, things were going pretty damn good. I didn't realize this until I started to use the gunslinger, but most of the stress that I encountered is mainly the fear of my nest getting destroyed immediately. Because that feeling of having one spy destroy my entire nest over and over again was crushing you have to be kidding me you have to be fucking kidding me why why but with the gunslinger i didn't have a nest i didn't have to worry about my gun i didn't have to worry about my dispenser i didn't really have to worry about anything except for running up and killing people it truly felt like i was playing the game a completely different way and unlike what some twitter users would say battle engine could be an easy subclass it's not as good as penis scout but you know, another major facet I want to talk about is how important teleporters actually are. I recognized this early on, but I didn't really think it was fitting until right now, but I used to really believe that teleporters were only good for offense. But honestly, a teleporter can be the determining factor for if a game is won or not. I never really realized how annoying a spy, scout, or really any class in the backline is, but once I started playing NG and having to walk back every single time my teleporter got destroyed, else my entire team falls apart, it became very important very quickly. It's such a basic concept too, just bringing your team to the fight faster, but for whatever reason, I never really thought about it. Another thing I haven't really thought about though, is my strange count. I'm still behind. <laughs> I finally hit 10,000 points, which would be great if it wasn't two-thirds of my goal. I still have 5,000 points worth of engineer to keep playing in the next three days. I don't even know if this is possible anymore, but I'm sure as hell gonna test the limit of that. I can't play this game! This is ridiculous! <laughs> Why? Why? At this point in the challenge, I was becoming manic. I played TF2 for so long that I really wasn't even making sense anymore. Jackal! Jackal! It's a jackal! Jackal! Oh, no! Up, down, A, A, left, right, A, B, up, down, right. No! I suck dick! I suck dick! I suck dick! I'm also contractually obligated to talk about the, uh... The, the Carl Jacobs grilled cheese combo. This term was actually made up by a uh, famous British guy, El Maxo. And once he heard that I was doing one month NG, he wanted me to bring it up. So I, I have to now, you know, I'm, I'm his little bitch. So, <laughs> the Carl Jacobs combo is when you get a sentry kill, then you destroy it so you have frontier justice crits, and then you sit around trying to high five somebody, and then you you high five them, and then one shot them as engineer. See, this would work, except except the the animation's too long. It doesn't even it doesn't even fucking work. <laughs> but there was no time for Carl Jacobs grilled cheese combos as I was approaching day thirty quickly, 
and my strange count was not getting any higher waiting for someone to high five me. So I pulled out all the stops. I try harded my ass off. I got the crits med. I got the pockets. I did everything I could to try and hit this goal. Because after everything I've been through, what would really suck is not hitting it. Since my balls got cut off, I have been on the same <laughs> Spike was also here at Man. one point. Oh my god. <laughs> Walking you around right in the walking you. around in the walking a walking a walking a walking around in the town. What the car did a backflip? I can't hit him. As time went by, I realized how impossible this would be. By day 29, I was only at 11,000 points. There's no way that I can get 4,000 points in a day. It's just not possible. But then I remembered something. It's January. January has 31 days. So technically, if I'm spending a month doing this, I got to spend the whole month. I have an extra day to, to hit the goal. Okay, it's technically 11.30 on January 31st. Um, and I'm at 13,000 points. Uh, I was thinking about just like cheating, but that's just not cool. So I'm going to call it here. Uh, goal one, failure. I'm really tired. Admitting failure is not easy. It took so long to make this video because I didn't know how to frame my failure here. I didn't hit the 15,000 point goal. And yeah, I could have strange farmed or I could have changed it to 10k and no one would have known. That's just not fair. I have to take this one on the chin. I failed this goal, which sucks because it's not like I didn't try. I spent a lot of time playing engineer, upwards of 80 hours this month, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that I set a goal for myself. I even changed it and I still couldn't hit it. But you know what? That's okay. I still have something to prove. Something that I've been practicing for since day one. I'm not going to let this stupid number take over what really matters. Did I actually get better as NG? Can I prove that I am significantly better than I was before? Well, I guess we'll find out. But this is it. If I don't do well in this specific pub, then everything falls apart. I was nervous, but I knew what I had to do. So we won the stack Dust Bowl lobby, and I was a pretty big contributor throughout all of it, so I would say that I passed my second goal, and I'm officially a decent engineer now. So what now? Well, I'd consider this month an overall success. My decision making has improved, my building placement has gotten a lot stronger, and hey, I even used the rescue ranger without shooting people. 
that much. I'm, I'm still working on that, but <laughs> we'll, we're good with that. But the most important part, at least to me, is that my confidence as engineer has increased tenfold. I learned a lot about game sense, I learned a lot about positioning, and honestly, I learned a lot about the pros and cons about playing engineer in general. I don't think I'm ever going to be as good as someone like Uncle Dang, but I did get a lot better in the past month, and while doubling my engineer time, I think I've tripled my skill. Throughout all of January, I played engineer for around 80 hours, and used pretty much every item in his arsenal at some point or another. And here are the preferred loadouts that I came up with. My first loadout is Shotgun, the Wrangler, and then the Jag. I really like these items. It lets me play aggressive, but I can still maintain a nest if need be, and it allows me to rebuild at any point if things go awry. In the next slot, I have my Eureka Effect loadout. This is literally so I can just do the fast rollouts while teleporting with the Eureka Effect. I sometimes use it if there's a cheeky scout or spy that goes just for my teleporters so I can rebuild it really quickly. Or some games if I really want to be an asshole, I'll just be a sneaky little engineer main. Then I have my Battle NG loadout, which is the Gunslinger and the Frontier Justice. I, I really don't think I need to go into more detail about why this is so good. And then in my last slot is the Rescue Ranger Wrangler set. Look, I really tried to enjoy this. Uh, I did have some really cool games and some really awesome plays with it, but in general, I just can't get over the heavy reliance on another entity to do the work with me throughout. Since January, I've gotten a lot more comfortable with it and I've been using it a lot more, but I still sometimes shoot people with it and go to my own ways. I'm really focusing on fixing that, but you know. I also wrote down some notes on some items I just didn't use. Uh, I didn't use the Pompson because <laughs> it sucked. The Panic Attack is, is a good shotgun, but I don't know, something feels wrong when I try to use it. I feel like I do a lot less damage, and that fixed bullet spread buff that Uncle Dane talked about, I don't really know if it makes that big of a difference or not. And then the short circuit that I just, I totally forgot about. Yeah, I just didn't use it because I'm, I'm stupid, uh, which, which is fine, but while trying it and, and trying to find a use for it, I don't know. I, I think it could be nice to win a 1v1 sometimes, or it's good to spam out the first spawn in Dustful, but it's not really an item that I care for in the first place. Anyway, boys, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten this far, then subscribe. It's the best way for me to tell if these videos are actually good or not. Um, also, follow me on Twitter so I can uh, ratio all my friends. And then check out my Discord. It's been really nice to have a little community to talk to. We have TF2 discussions, but we also have things like Rhythm Game Discussion and Valorant, if you like that. So uh, if you want to check it out, just the link's in the description. And thank you to my patrons, where uh, they're allowed to say whatever they want now. That, that's coming up on the screen. <laughs> my name is Zenith. Thank you so much for watching. So like the Wrangler?